Hello, everyone. This is the, the second lecture on the uh, program of, on, of the Silver Cone University uh, Archaeological Field School. Uh, my name is Tanikla Chandrik. I am the full-time lecturer at the, at the Department of Archaeology, Silver Cone University. Okay. My talk today about how we do field archaeology. As the topic, as you can see right now, is that uh, it's pretty introductory. So it will be an introduction to archaeology, uh, uh, how archaeology. But first of all, before we do archaeology, okay, we normally start with the research design. Okay, so archaeologists have something in their mind, what they want to do, what they want to know, okay, and what the contribution of their work. Okay, will contribute to the world of archaeology or to the public or to the uh, uh, to other people. Okay. So uh, we start with what we call archaeological research design. Okay. In this research design, uh, at least we will set out what we want to know. We might start with questions, hypotheses, or models or theories that we want to prove, we want to test okay, all the questions that we need to answer. So we set out, well, we begin with what we want to know. Okay. So, and then we uh, think about what we plan to do and why we want to do it. Okay. What you want to say, let's say, if you want to know the origins of rice agriculture, okay, this is your, uh, maybe your question or what you want to know. You want, you want to know the origins of uh, rice agriculture in mainland South Asia, for example. Okay. So what we plan to do or what you plan to do, you will think about, wow, how would you uh, get the, the data, the evidence about origins of rice agriculture? Okay. Why knowing the origins of rice agriculture is important, is significant okay. in, your, you know, uh, uh, in your research. Okay. And then you will move on to think about the techniques, the methods that we, you plan to use okay, and how you will do it. Okay. So we you do the way you do excavation, okay. what types of data you want to, you think you will get from excavation. Okay. How do you, how will you do the excavation? Okay. You will do random, uh, you do, uh, you know, what, what type of, uh, uh, digging techniques, what tools? Okay. This is and how would you uh, work uh, in the landscape or where where are sites that might yield data on rice agriculture that you expect to uncover. So this is important as well in your research design. You need to talk. You need to think about this. Okay, and probably most importantly is your contribution of your research to the world of archaeology, to the public, to the, uh, uh, the academic arena. Okay. So you will expect that your results of your research will contribute uh, to a better, for example, the better understanding of how rice agriculture was developed and continue. Okay. Or what are the uh, impacts of rice agriculture to the uh, to the past people? Okay. That is, you need to discuss. You need to think about your contribution of your research. Okay. So this is the uh, 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 these are important things in your research design. Okay. Once you have these kind of things or issues in mind, you might want to move on to develop your research proposal. Okay, you start from your research design, you discuss data acquisition, uh, analysis, interpretation, publication, which in the study of uh, uh, archaeology. Okay. These are photos of, you know, uh, some of, you know, how we do archaeology, like the photo on the uh, left-hand side showing uh, probably the how we move 
from our office to the field. Okay, so this is uh, which is part of uh, of the the whole process of archaeological uh, uh, research. Well, we have the process, say uh, like the the chart on the right hand side. See, we start from formulation of questions, uh, thesis, or background research. Okay, you need to do more. Uh, like uh, literature review, uh, you need to discuss about your model, your hypothesis that you want to prove, you want to test. Okay, and also think about feasibility studies. Is this possible to uh, uh, find sites with rice remain? If you want to know about the origin of agriculture, okay. if rice remains are not well preserved, well, does it less feasible? Is less, you know, it, it might have less feasibility. Okay, so what types of uh, sites okay, are sites in the remote, very remote area they have very little uh, testability. Okay, so you just, you know, uh, feasibility of your research. Well, some research questions are very interesting, are very important, but if you cannot collect your data or if not feasible. So this, you have to change your mind. You have, might have to change your research topic or research uh, questions. Okay. And also think about the implementations of your project. Well, you need to get permits. You need to have funding. You have to, have, you have to think about logistics. Permit, for example. If you want to do excavation, like in the context of Thailand, you need to get the permit from the finance department okay, in terms of legal permit. Okay. You, may not, uh, you might want to get permit from uh, local communities. Okay. If you work, if your sites are located in the village, in some village or in like, for example, in temples, you need to get permission from the airport, uh, from the uh, village and so on. So permitting is very important. If you don't get permit, uh, permission, so you're not allowed to, to work in the field. You, it's very difficult to do field work. Okay. Also, Funding, well, resource project, particularly IKO resource project are very uh, expensive. You, know, you need to, uh, to have enough money, to have enough funding to cover all costs you know, for a uh, 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 field work cost for where you would stay in the, what kind of accommodation, uh, digging tools, you have to hire uh, uh, team members and so on. So this need money. They all need money. So, and think about logistic as well. You know, thinking about the modern uh, context of the uh, of the sites or of the place in 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 the world. You know, uh, if sites are located in a very deep area, in the remote area, so where would you stay? Uh, what what types of uh, accommodation? Uh, what kind of food uh, would you hire? Uh, someone to cook for you, or you will rent cars and bus and so on for transportation okay, of your crew member, of the things. Okay. This is also important. You have to keep this in mind. Okay. So they can move to the next step, which is very, which is the main talk today is about data acquisition or field work. Okay. How, how we do field work. Okay. So you will think of the, uh, uh, what, what main types of uh, data methods that you are uh, data you will do it through survey or, or, or excavation or both. Once you get this idea done uh, or you can get it down, so you can move, uh, complete these steps. Okay. We'll talk in more detail later on. So for data collection. Once you got your data during, uh, uh, during and after few, you will need to process your data. Let's like say, uh, initial uh, classification of the materials or evidence of the uh, archaeological remains. You know, you have to cataloging, you have to do classification, you have to do some uh, of the artifacts, okay, which uh, are before you move next to your the analysis of your data. Okay. So there are several uh, analytical techniques that you can use, scientific technique, okay. Uh, you need to know the age. For example, what types of sample you need to send for radiocarbon datings, for example. Okay. You need to think about uh, some special uh, framework 
like you need to uh, focus what types of technique, what specific uh, uh, question uh, related to research question. For example, provenience analysis of the sample, uh, DNA analysis of the rice to get to know in more details about rice species. So you can discuss about probably the movement of the origins of uh, uh, rice cultivation. What are what were the first rice species that people plant or, or domesticate? So you need to do DNA uh, analysis. You need to do other forms of scientific analysis, okay? So once you got the analysis done, you can move to the next step. It's your, you need to interpret and discussion of your the results of the analysis. This is how you make the meanings how you read the data, how you read the number from your uh, analysis, what the number say, what the number, number mean. Okay. So you need to think about, uh, use the data to interpret about archeological questions, mainly the behavior of the people, the life of the people, what the data from the, uh, what the results from the analysis tell you about human behavior okay, or, or cultural, uh, behavior. Okay, so this is also important in terms of uh, interpretation. Okay, uh, after that, you will need to let your interpretation or your research to a wider public. So you need to publish your data, your research, your project in a widely accessible form. In oh, there are there are several ways to uh, disseminate the results of your research. It can be in the mean, uh, by means of uh, paper, books, report, or poster, or, uh, or exhibition, and so on. Okay. So now let's move back to the uh, state uh, on the data acquisition, which is the main part of field archaeology. Okay. So this state normally begin with the uh, site survey. Okay. Well, uh, you need to do uh, survey. Okay, uh, to see uh, what type of site, what areas, what type of landscape or environment uh, before you plan to, uh, to do excavation, you need to do excavation. Okay. So uh, there are several techniques of survey. Okay, so uh, which I will talk later on. Okay. And in this program, uh, uh, other lectures will also focus on survey techniques and execution techniques. Okay, so uh, so you can also learn more about uh, survey and excavation. But in the general scope, uh, in the general idea about data collection, you need to do survey. Uh, Sometimes data from your survey can uh, can be enough to answer some questions about your research questions. Okay. Let's say if you do uh, field walking, uh, you want to get data about the size of your site. Okay. You can do uh, different ways of uh, uh, survey techniques to get the size of your resource area or the size of your site. Okay. So uh, without the need to do excavations. But sometimes or, or most of the time, uh, some data that are important, that are crucial to your resource question are below the soil, below the surface then you need to do uh, excavation or digging. Okay. So to do this, again, you need to think about uh, 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 train or experienced crew member, okay. or, or some experts that might well come and join and work with you. Okay. This is also the uh, uh, multidisciplinary kind of research as well, like uh, zoology, palynology, chemistry, and et cetera. Okay. But the concept, all the key thing in uh, the key idea uh, step or state of resource is that you need to do record keep when you collect data make sure that data that you are collecting are from the best technique you use the best record okay if you do drawing you have to make sure that uh, the plan okay the plan will the this the pattern of the artifacts in your digging unit, for example, okay, uh, represent the accurate in situ, accurate location, accurate spot 
or provenance. Okay. So this is uh, uh, what we need to keep in mind. Uh, we need to get the accurate data or accurate record keeping. Okay. If you want to move the artifacts, if, uh, uh, you do some analysis in the lab, you make sure that the artifact come from what context, what level, what provenance. Okay. So if, even when you do uh, photographing, you need to put scale, Okay. Uh, or when you draw the distribution pattern, the evidence, you might have some tools to make sure that uh, the pattern of distribution is accurately. Okay. This is the key things. This is probably the, uh, uh, the heart of the uh, data collection. Okay. And this is uh, so that you need to move to the, the analysis that I just mentioned. Okay. So you can use several ways to analyze the data from your uh, field work, okay? Uh, or when you interpret. This is how uh, users interpret the results of their research. So they do not talk about the objects, the remains, but they talk about the picture or the behavior, the story about humans behind the artifacts. So we study human behavior from the evidence, from the remains that we collect, that we found from the field work. Okay, we should present uh, our, we should interpret our research in this manner. Okay, talking about way of life, how people hunt, if, uh, or how people investigate, how people work in the field. Okay, uh, to see that the past society, to see as different aspects or different dimensions of humans in the past, rather than explaining or describing artifacts or material remains. Okay, so, so in your interpretation, okay. since artifacts are silenced, you need to make sense. Okay, you found number of parts, number of bits. What those parts of bits tell about human behavior, human society, or human, or human story? This is what we mean, what I mean by interpretation. Okay. So to interpret your data, the results of your analysis, okay. you might have some uh, theoretical framework. You wanna put uh, your interpretation in, in what kind of framework? There are, there are several ways to interpret your results of analysis. And then uh, once you're done uh, with your interpretation, as I mentioned, you need to move on. Uh, to let other people know, okay, it's don't just write a great literature or great report and then you know put it into your shelf <laughs> without letting other people know wow, uh, what result or what your resource that contribute. This is important, okay. And there are several ways to uh, publish, to present your resource okay? to uh, to other people, not just uh, among other others, but among other public people, okay? So you can do, uh, you can write books, articles, uh, you can prepare poster, exhibitions, brochure, public presentation, site to and so on, okay? Uh, so that your results are significant, are important, are useful for others. So think about others. Okay. Uh, yes, um, more specifically on the uh, uh, field work, okay. So uh, when we do field work, we start uh, finding sites, okay. So where sites, what sites are, are, are geographical locations that you think there would be data, geo evidence, okay, for your resource, okay. So finding sites are important. If you want to collect a good data, you need to find appropriate sites, okay, or at least find sites, okay, because site the place that you can collect your data. Okay, so to find site, uh, there are two major strategies to find sites. These are survey and excavation. Okay, uh, but before you do uh, your survey and excavation, one way that you can find sites or get some idea about uh, your uh, suitable site or, or site that you for uh, can be found sometimes in the in report 
in other works that I have done earlier. So that means that you might want to do literature review. Okay. A lot of uh, what has been done, what needs to be done, say that you are, uh, that you think they are important. There may be some other works already. Some uh, other archaeologists have, might have done research at the site already. So you don't need to redo your work at the same site. Okay. So literature review will give you a better idea what has been done, what needs to be done. Okay. So I think I, I strongly recommend that you do a, you know, a, a intensive literature review before you start uh, to go out to look for site. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and also study some available or current maps uh, of, the, uh, of the area that you think that uh, your site might be located. So you might wanna consult uh, geological maps, soil maps, climatic maps, and other source of geographic and environmental information, okay. as well as historical, social, and cultural uh, ethno-historical information that is also important before you go out for doing field archaeology. You may well want to you know, uh, uh, study uh, knowledge or existing data about uh, the people in the area, environment in the area, okay, before you go out. Okay. So once you have done, you think you have done enough, okay, uh, uh, intensively enough uh, of little review, you can start the field work, just to conduct field work. Okay. Anyway, I have to remind you that field work is not the end of the resource. Field work is just the tool or the means of the resource. Okay. Digging is not the end of archaeological resource. Digging is part of the data collection. Okay. But, uh, but digging is important, but field work is important because if you don't have data from the field work, you just use data from existing literature or from uh, 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 ethnographic uh, information or other information. This is not enough. Okay. You have to get your own data, okay? and your own data is from, uh, from the site. Okay. So that's why you need to do field work, because field work will provide the fresh and raw data that are pertinent to your research questions. Okay. So that's why I say, uh, first and foremost, uh, you need to find sites okay, for your field work. Okay. But site can be found sometimes by accidents. Okay. But you don't need to wait for accident to get uh, uh, to buy site. Okay. Well, site can be found by uh, what we call accidental discoveries. Uh, for example, you might wanna maybe someone like like in, in the context of Thailand, uh, many famous sites like Ban Chiang or other sites in the northeast have been found by farmers, rice farmers when they plow their land, objects, uh, ancient objects uh, that are uh, that were buried about you know, uh, uh, 40, 50 centimeters below the surface have been turned up on the surface after plowing. Or uh, uh, so after rain, so during rainy season, sometimes the rain erodes the surface and, and, and uh, objects uh, appear on the surface. So uh, this can, be, can lead to the discovery of sites okay, or other you know, natural costs, you know, uh, flooding or earthquake, or sometimes, you know, uh, uh, Erosion by uh, by wind, by water, or by other natural factors can lead to the discovery of, of, of site, or even humans. You know, sometimes people get lost. You know, they went to uh, they went into the caves and they found some paintings, rock paintings, rock arts, and so on, and then uh, they remember report uh, relevant people. So site can be found by by uh, accidents. What I mean uh, in this uh, slides, however. Normally, our cases will do deliberate survey. They will look for site by themselves. Okay, uh, they don't need to to wait for other people to inform. What well, there are sites, there are artifacts turn up on the surface in, in some area, and then we need to go out to look uh, for those sites. Okay, if there are sites or not, you don't want to wait for that. You want to do your own site survey to look for site. Okay, so maybe uh, we can. Uh, do survey by means of what we call field walking. 
Oh, you can use remote sensing method, or you can talk to people, interview people uh, to, to find sight. Okay. Uh, for interview, sometimes people who live near the uh, landscape in the environment that you are interested, they might know the, you know, something about the place. Sometimes we call them the accidental archaeologists because they know the area, they know the landscape, they even know some of the objects that you are looking for, the materials, the remains that you are looking for. Okay. So it's, it doesn't hurt to talk to them, you know, interview them, discuss with them, or show them some photos of things, of the objects that you are looking for. Okay. So they might, want, they might uh, be able to provide some uh, of excellent information here. So we, we consider them as excellent source of information or data okay, about uh, finding sites. Okay. But for archaeological survey, okay, as archaeologists, we, we, we normally do survey uh, in uh, to look for sites. Okay. Uh, normally sites can be found on two contexts or two uh, locations, okay, sites that can be found on the surface, okay, like objects that turn up on the surface, okay, or not very deep under the ground, okay. So we call surface survey, okay. Sometimes objects or remain very under the ground, so you need to look for them by means of uh, subsurface survey, okay. Uh, you can use different techniques to get data or to find sites that are under the ground by means of subsurface survey. For surface survey, uh, you can do field walking or foot survey. Okay. This, method of, uh, this method of surface survey okay, can be done uh, effectively or efficiently uh, in the area where the visibility is high. So it means that in the area, the open landscape, where you can see the objects or remains on the ground really clearly, not in the dense forested area, not in the area that are not easy accessible. Okay. So like in Thailand, we normally do field walking in the summer. Okay. The, uh, the surface is very clearly visible. Okay. So this is a, uh, uh, the technique that we, we use often, very often in, in, uh, in, the, in finding sites. Okay. Uh, these are some photos showing the field walking that I did in central Thailand. That sometimes objects or artifacts uh, that are on the surface, we as archaeologists, we have done enough literature, we know almost right away that these are artifacts, they are not modern objects, they are archaeological objects okay. uh, in beads so, or uh, pottery or etc. Okay. So this can be found from field walking or foot survey or pedestrian survey. Okay. So uh, in the in the areas with again with high visibility okay, in the open landscape. Okay. Sometimes rice fields, uh, sugarcane uh, sugar uh, plantation fields or in other areas okay, in the area that are pretty open. Okay, that you can see the surface very clearly. Okay. At least uh, in the area in the northeast, what we call in the uh, in the uh, Tungkula Ronghai in uh, northeastern Thailand, where it's pretty open. Okay. So you can see a large number of uh, concentration of pottery fragments. Okay. So suggesting that this is the site. Okay. It's very interesting. Or you can do transit if you want to uh, collect more data in terms of uh, to see the distribution of uh, your uh, archaeological remains or sites in the wider landscape. We, you can do a technique that is called transit that you divide your remember in the in a in a line, in a linear aspect. Okay, and each one stand in the same distance. So say every one meter away, okay? And we walk across the landscape simultaneously at the same time. And then we uh, uh, note, we notify, we observe what uh, are objects uh, or artifacts on the surface that can be found. And then you, you do your record. This uh, technique can be uh, used 
to uh, to see a, a wider contribution or sorry a wider distribution of uh, uh, of artifacts or type of artifacts density of artifacts in the last landscape okay and sometimes as i mentioned earlier sites can be a very middle ground yeah, or then you need to do subsurface survey okay you can uh, use the uh, uh, different techniques of what we call remote sensing okay so uh, aerial photography or the satellite sensor imagery or GPR. So G GPR has been uh, used quite often uh, in archaeological survey okay, to see uh, what might be below the surface that might suggest that this area was an area used by the ancient people. That area might be a site. Okay, then you can do intensive uh, subsurface survey like uh, 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 test digging or test excavation. Yeah, there are some, there are several techniques or several tools or methods to do subsurface survey uh, by means of remote sensing. My colleague uh, will provide details next time uh, about uh, survey method. Okay. So this is the case of the survey in the WASP area in India using the uh, remote sensing. Or air photo can be uh, a good tool uh, to find site okay, from the remote area, like a, you know, uh, they took the photos from the air. So uh, looking from the air, from the sky, you can see shape, size, general uh, distribution of, uh, of sites across the landscape. Okay. That will provide you, you know, some, some good idea, some sense about where sites are located and, and if they are sites or not. Uh, you can, after that, you can, uh, if you suspect that if there are sites or not, you can do uh, in more intensive free walking, okay? You know, go directly to the site, to the area you, that you think they are site, okay? Do field work, uh, do a transit or a foot survey or even excavations. A drone is also important too now uh, that has been used to uh, do survey or finding site particularly in the area that are, that are least accessible, like in, in the jungle or in the, in the uh, like rock paintings on the cliff that, uh, that you cannot walk into, you cannot climb. Okay? Sometimes drone can, can, uh, uh, can be a good choice to do a survey. Okay? For example, the uh, archaeologists in Arizona, they found site based on the, uh, the drone. Uh, Technique, okay. or you can do ogre coring. This technique, I sometimes I use this technique uh, to look for sites or even to observe to get some sense about the distribution, about the density of artifacts below the ground that you cannot see them on the surface. Okay, it is an idea too for me uh, to uh, get idea about the deposit below the ground in the area the visibility is low, like in the forest, like in the area that is not uh, good for field walking, okay? But this technique has some disadvantages. For example, it, it's labor intensive. <laughs> you need to have a, a strong crew member uh, to, you know, to do the auger, okay? Uh, so far, as I know, they still, there are no electronic uh, auger uh, or the calling uh, uh, tools, okay? you need to, to use the labor. Okay? It can be dangerous sometimes, you know, because uh, you can get cut, you can get hurt okay? from, from the sharp tools. Okay? But it's very, uh, it's very efficient in the area with the low visibility. Okay? And it could it's a very accurate uh, observation about density of artifacts, about the depth of the layer of the cultural layer. Okay. I have used this technique uh, to find sites and to get an idea before I start the excavation. Okay. So the, uh, the data from the ochre coring can help you identify, can help you design if uh, you want to dig, uh, you want to do excavation in the area or not. If they show low density, they show shallow uh, layer of artifacts, you want to move to other uh, uh, ochre coring area, provide better. Uh, or number or density, higher density of artifacts. So ochre coring can, can be a good tool uh, to do a subsurface survey. Okay. 
okay? Or you can do uh, tumor testing that is quite common in the US in, in, in other world. Uh, you use the tumor to dig in a shallow, uh, a shallow pit, give some idea if there are artifacts or the remains of the past or not, okay? Or you can use test excavation, okay? So data from your surface survey and subsurface survey uh, might give you a, a clue or a good sense that uh, you want to move on to do excavation or not, or where you decide to do excavation, okay? Where you're going to sink a hole uh, in the ground, okay? So that is uh, what we mean by excavations, okay? So excavation is, uh, is involve a lot of activities. You have to remove saw, you have to screen, you have to look the fact you have to do accurate record keeping, okay? This is something that is very important, but you need to do it delicately, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, thinking about excavation, but first of all, uh, you need to ask where you need to do excavation. What part? What uh, you know? What area of the site you have outside? You need to do the excavation at the site. But what of the site? Okay. No archaeologists decide where to do excavation in the area that is that has not been earlier disturbed. The area that might show the high density of artifacts below the surface. Okay. So, or the, for example, data from Oka Kori will provide you a good idea where you will do excavations. You may wanna start digging, uh, plan the test unit in area where you have a high density of artifacts, the depth uh, of artifacts that you, if you want to do a chronological observation of the site, okay, you want to dig an area with multiple layers, okay. So this is what we think uh, where we decide to dig. So normally archaeologists use or design where to dig based on this, based on the data, based on the diversity, density, or the depth of the artifacts that we found from the survey, either surface survey or subsurface survey, okay. So Sites are chosen or are selected uh, for excavation because we think they contain information or data okay, that is pertinent to the resource question, by the way. Okay. So, uh, but we, before start digging, you need, you need to do, uh, you need to map your site. Okay. So you can see uh, uh, the shape, the size of your site, location of your uh, excavation unit in, uh, in relation to other uh, area of the site. So mapping of the size is also important. You can use what we call the total station as the, uh, the means or the tool to do, uh, to do mapping of the site. Okay. Uh, once you have done, you know, the mapping, so when you to actually do digging or excavation, so you need to keep in mind that excavation is destruction and it is costly, it is expensive, okay? So once you start remove the soil, remove the thing from the digging, from the area, so you start destroying your site, okay? This is something you have to keep in mind. That's why we need to be carefully design the excavation technique, method, and recording method, okay? okay. Because you start to destroy the things destroy your site, okay? What we have, what, what is left behind after this touch on it, your field record, your artifacts, your record, your photo, your all kind of record that are accurately documented. Okay? This is the principle of excavations, okay? And there are other things that you have to keep in mind as well, I will talk shortly, okay? So uh, like these photos of my field work, uh, my ex cabin at a site in central Thailand in Lovuri province. Okay, so uh, you, uh, the upper left photo show, we have to think about what tools, okay? You, you're gonna use heavy tools, heavy digging tools or soft tools. Okay, if you need to use a uh, heavy tool like hole, spades, 
or you know or other uh, you know, digging tools that are very heavy that can destroy the artifacts during the digging. Okay. You may want to consider a softer tools or, or, or less destructive tools, maybe a brush or wooden tool, like you know, a, a wooden stick okay, to slowly or carefully remove the dirt okay, uh, from the artifacts so that you can reveal or open you know, uh, the soil uh, that might be associated with the artifacts so that you can keep track with distribution, with the association of the artifacts uh, during the excavation. Okay. The photo on the upper right corner, uh, sometimes you need to do screening, either dry screening or wet screening. Okay. Because some artifacts are very tiny, some evidence, some remains are very tiny, like beads or tiny uh, plant remains, like their seeds, they're part of the uh, of the plants, or a small fragment of charcoal, which are good for dating. Okay, so uh, to get to collect small or tiny objects or remains, you need to do screen screening. Okay, and uh, when you do when you dig using different types of uh, tools, make sure that the artifacts, the remains stay in situ. So may stay in contact or in contact. Okay, so don't remove them until you have done all documented. Okay, you take photo, you record, you draw uh, the 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 uh, the remains. Okay, and then they can remove them for further analysis or to dig in the lower layers. Okay, so during the excavation, you might find that your site contains several layers or sometimes we call deposits. You might have to notice if there are changes in soil color, soil texture, or types of artificial remains or cultural objects. Because this kind of change might lead to the, uh, what we call the state stratigraphic order of the site, or in other sense, the temporal order of the, the use of the site. A okay, different layer might uh, uh, suggest a different time period of use of uh, activities. Different types of artifact class or di diagno uh, diagnostic artifacts might, again, uh, give, uh, provide some sense about different uh, cultural period, cultural activity, or cultural people, or cultural traditions. Okay. So site deposit okay, uh, tend to contain different types of materials, different type of evidence. Site might be a single component site or multi-component sites okay, based on the deposit. Okay. So thinking about assemblage of your art or, or okay. uh, is also important if you need to, uh, to focus. Okay. So uh, like for this photo show uh, different layers of deposits through time. Okay. Uh, the soil layer are not very uh, uh, easily uh, demarcated, but that's why you need to, to look at the change in soil, soil texture. Or also, that's why you need experts, geomorphologists, soil experts, okay, to help you identify with the uh, different deposit, soil deposit. Okay. This is also kind of uh, uh, soil deposit or cultural deposit. Okay. This is the case in China that I have visited the website. So geomorphologists, they were able to identify a small fragment, of, small fractions of soil deposit to several sub layers. Okay. Again, based on soil color, soil texture and, uh, and, and uh, material remains. Very important to see the evolution, to see the change in uh, activities in uh, occupation and so on about human behavior. Okay, so site can be used over uh, several periods by by different people, okay. such as by different uh, deposit and cultural materials. Okay, so keep in mind that digging is a team effort. Okay, you have to work cooperatively.
you have to work you know uh, uh, with other people you have to make that your team members know the work they understand the goal of your research what kind of artifacts that you are looking for you have to work cooperatively okay it is a team effort okay uh, so like you have you might divide your team uh, members into you know like screening team uh, cleaning team uh, and etc and also thinking about excavation types okay uh, if your research question can be done using only uh, what we call risk excavation uh, you select some part of the site or you want to dig the whole site okay that's called uh, total excavations or you want to do only just test unit okay picking up a small portion of the site and then just you know do the digging in that area that you might gain enough data okay so sometimes it does need to dig the whole site to get the pertinent data to get the data that is pertinent to your research questions okay so a portion or 10 percent of your site okay you can provide enough data to answer your question you need to, just to do 10 percent you don't need to do 100 percent of your excavations give some part of the site for the next generation of archaeologists. As I mentioned again, that digging is destruction. You may, you may not want to destroy the whole site. Okay. So uh, uh, you can uh, apply this approach of excavation, you know, total excavation or selective or test excavations. Okay. So again, depend on your research question or the conditions of your site. If your site is working in a, in a modern activity, modern development area that need to be developed into other things, then it means that the site might be completely destroyed. Then you might want to do total excavations to remove, to risk, you know, to, to uh, uh, make sure the site, to save the site okay, from destruction, from modern de uh, destruction. Okay. In terms of method of excavation, Again, it's, there are several uh, methods of excavations. It can be trove testing, a small unit. You can do trenching. Uh, you can do uh, uh, when you uh, the technique of digging. It can be horizontal digging or vertical digging. Or you can combine all techniques. It can be a mixed method. Okay, you, you can use mixed method and you know, both uh, horizontal, vertical. Okay, uh, so you do trenching. Okay. Uh, do uh, what we call small test unit or standard units. Okay. You can do block excavations. Okay. Uh, you can do orco coring. Okay. Again, it depends on uh, 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 your research questions and uh, site conditions as well. You can design. Okay. And I'll also recommend that you, uh, if possible, you need to, uh, to do flotation. Okay. Flotation a technique, uh, the use of fluid suspension, recover small part of uh, some material uh, remains, like you know, bone fragments, uh, charcoal, seed, fish scale that are lighter. They will float on the face of the water. Then you can scoop, you can collect them. Uh, sometimes flotation will lead to the discovery of important remains, uh, you know, the, uh, the ancient, uh, like diets. Uh, the paleo environment as well. Okay, so it's important to do floating if if you have a, a team member. And the, the floating method is not that uh, uh, complicated, and it's not expensive. You can do a bucket flotation. You can do machine flotations. Okay, so and what you need to work with people. Again, you know, it's kind of a, a multidisciplinary resource. So archaeology is just like other science, other uh, disciplines. Uh, they have to work with other people because you are dealing with different types of things, different types of, you know, uh, types of material, types of site type, site, uh, different uh, types of uh, soil or, you know, uh, some other things. So I strongly recommend that you work closely with other 
other specialists okay to make sure that your data uh, uh you know scientifically or uh enough you know uh uh, uh to answer your users questions okay but there are some other aspect practical aspects of your work okay so i mentioned earlier you know getting money you know if you don't have money is you cannot is it's not possible okay it's not feasible uh, to do research okay thinking about where you will get funding uh, uh think about other tools you have to get a good tool Okay, uh, use the uh, travel as to be a uh, good travel or other techniques, other tools, you know, that, that, are, that, are, that are good enough at the time that you are doing your research. You work with expert, with trained or experienced team. Okay, so you need to get trained and experienced people to do. Okay, well, we work almost days and night in the field. Okay, during the day, you remember to dig uh, other work, other uh, digging around, you know, the end of the day. During the night, you want to start washing some objects, some artifacts, you want to catalog them, label them, you know. Some objects need to be record, need to be registered, catalog, uh, catalogs as soon as possible. Otherwise, they might get lost. They might, they might uh, 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 get you know, damaged. Okay, so you need to wash structures, uh, for example, so that you can do the next step, do the uh, uh, classification. Okay, to do classification, you need to make sure that you are, you know, you can observe the key, uh, the key, what we call the attributes of objects, like color, design, shape, form. If the artifacts are still dirty, they are still or covered with something that you cannot see the detail, the design, the color, the texture, the form. So then your classification is not okay, it's not appropriate. Okay, so you need to do uh, the washing or cataloging as soon as you can. Okay, so you need to work uh, also, you know, working in the field, working in the, you know, uh, some. Uh, different environments. Uh, you can face with some dangerous <laughs> uh, animals, okay, uh, or some other uh, not very good conditions, like in the dry area, a lot of dust. So you may want to wear a mask, a mask during the screening if it is very dry area, okay. In the hot and humid area, like in South Asia, you know, tropical area, a lot of that where there are a lot of mosquitoes. Yeah, you want to think about this. Okay, some infects animals <laughs> or poisonous animals like you know snakes. I found a lot of snakes uh, near my site. Okay, uh, scorpions. <laughs> okay, and other uh, infected animals or poisonous uh, animals. Okay, and also working in in, in uh, contemporary uh, society, there are uh, people who are still you know they still believe in 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 power as their local cultural traditions okay it doesn't hurt to comply with their local traditions okay work with them okay if they have to perform some kind of ceremony okay uh based on their belief you, you might want to comply with them okay and then you will get a better co uh, cooperation okay so it it is i also strongly uh, recommend that you uh, encourage public participation you know, invite local people, other stakeholders, other people to come see uh, what you are doing. Explain them, okay. Tell, tell them, inform them, okay. Sometimes you can get uh, free labor. They can help you, uh, you can supply or they can help you to okay. That, or you can work, you know, uh, in, a, in a cooperative atmosphere, which is good for you uh, uh, to make your project successful. Okay, so well, we think about you know working together uh, and in terms of gender or sex. Sometimes you know you have to think about it, any uh, sexual harassment or uh, bullying others. Okay, it keep in mind. You know, you need to stay focused while working. Okay, make sure that you focus on your work rather than 
you know, uh, 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 bad mouthing others or, or gossiping. Uh, these are some, you know, uh, some something that you should not behave, you should not do during field work, the things outside the circle. Okay, yeah, laziness, you should not be lazy. Uh, no gossip, okay, uh, no swelling, cursing. God, God, you know, fucked up <laughs> if, you, if you feel in your mad mood. Don't do that, okay? Uh, so uh, should be, uh, should not be being culturally insensitive, okay? If you are from different cultures, working in, in, uh, 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 in they are with different cultural tradition, cultural background, you should comply, you should make sure you are sensitive to other people's cultural traditions, okay? Uh, don't drink too much, <laughs> otherwise you might lose control, okay? So you may wanna uh, do the things that are in the circle, listening, listening to other people, respect other people, cooperation, okay? Pull your own way. You work hard, as hard as other people. So while well, you can have fun during your work, okay. don't be lazy. Okay. You need to work to let other people other people sleep, you know, during the night time. Okay. So, you know, work, what we call colleague, work, look at other people, treat people as colleagues, okay, respect them. This is something that uh, you need to keep in mind to do a few work, okay. So uh, normally after digging, we backfill our test unit, okay, backfill, uh, by backfilling, I mean, might want to put some modern objects at the at the sterile layer, okay, and uh, and then you can backfill them, okay, uh, backfill your unit. Make sure that that area, that unit, has been excavated already, okay, so that the next group of archaeologists or next generation of archaeologists they don't need to dig in area, okay. So something there are some other ethics in. Uh, uh, I think of few words, you need to be sensitive to other people's work, okay, or give them uh, credit, okay, and you have to be honest uh, in terms of uh, data rec uh, recording. Say if you 10 bits, when you record, you have to say 10 bits. You don't make up your data. You don't make up your number of artifacts, okay. Be honest, okay, and with legal issues and conditions, like uh, talking about uh, permit. Okay, so work with other people uh, you know, in your area. Okay. So if there are local villagers, there are monks, there are Buddhist monks, or you know, and, and other group of people or states, okay. explain them, work with them, okay. Make sure that they understand what you are doing. Okay. So there are, there are some other uh, things. Okay. So don't talk in terms of commercial value of artifacts. Okay. So uh, focus on the economic value or informational value of your data, of your resource. Okay. So, and also edu educate public uh, the importance of your work okay. uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, a site tour or exhibition and so on. So there are, again, there are, there are several ways to do uh, to present your public, uh, to do public presentation and interpretation so that other people can understand your work, understand the significance of the facts of the archaeological resource, okay, so that you can, uh, the next generation can see, can see, appreciate, and value archaeology, okay. And the data, the material remains from your excavations should be uh, key to be kept, to be stored, should be uh, put in a safe place, okay, as uh, different collections, so that other people, other scientists, other scholars, other artists can come and use, can have access. They may have different questions, but they want to use the same remains, same type of data to answer different questions. So make sure that your data your remains are available for them. Since then, that's why you need to be in, in, in a safe place, a good place, okay? 
And also, this is the last slide, my uh, or a uh, comment. Uh, never undertake resource without enough training experience facilities okay, to complete the work. Okay, thank you.